Recently, I've been working on a project to do with reset efficiency for the category of 1.16 random seed glitch lists. This project was centered around improving background and wall resetting. Background and wall resets both force you to decide whether to play out a seed simply based on what the seed looks like when you spawn in. I'll be referring to this as the spawn image. I analyzed 1,000 seeds spawn images and collected data to draw conclusions about how we can better our reset efficiency through wall and background resets. There are two main reasons why I think this project is relevant. The first of which is that runners aren't entering very often given that they decide to play out a seed. From our data on 15 top runners, the highest percentage of seeds that a runner has entered on, given that they don't instantly background or wall reset that seed, is 12.9%. Runners like Jojo and Evan K, top resetters, are entering on 3% and 8% of seeds that they play out, respectively, and Cube is only entering on 11% of seeds that they play out. I believe these numbers can get much higher if runners know how to improve their background and wall resetting. The second reason is that runners are wasting a lot of time on seeds on which there is a low probability of entering. Our data suggests that an average of about 55% of the runner's playtime is spent on seeds on which they don't enter. The few seconds spent on each instance to check if it's playable add up. The 1000 screenshots I took were from seeds that have already been played by a runner. This runner was Kurobo. The reason I chose Kurobo is that he is a single instance resetter and quite frankly one of the best. Single instance runners play seeds to their max potential as every seed costs about 5 seconds of their time purely from loading up the seed. The reason I did not choose a multi instance or wall resetter is because some seeds are instantly reset and I wouldn't be able to tell if those seeds were enterable. Using a single instance resetter allows me to analyze the max potential of all seeds. There are a few potential spots for bias in this data, the first of which is runner bias. Runners not only have different skill levels as far as mechanical ability and reset efficiency, but also may make different decisions and may have different preferences. This could cause data on probabilities to be misleadingly low, as the runner is sometimes deciding not to play out the seed. Comparing the data of the single instance runner to that of multi instance runners also institutes bias because of hardware and software discrepancies, as well as the difference in reset styles. The other biases mainly came from myself as some of the data recorded was subjective, leaving room for bias to be established. I'd also like to point out that some of the data I mentioned may be outdated. The data shown on screen will be more current than the data I mentioned verbally. I'll briefly go over the settings I used when taking the screenshots of the spawn images. These are the settings that I deemed standard among RSG runners. I used Quake Pro First Person View and Wide Resets. Here's the reset analysis data on the sample of 1,000 runs, as well as Kurobo's, Revolve's, Jojo's, and Raul's latest 10,000 resets. Within the analyzed sample of 1,000 runs, any data on structureless and miscellaneous enters will be rather insignificant because only two entries qualified as each miscellaneous and structureless. Overall, Kurobo's session is representative of his overall statistics and somewhat representative of those of top runners. Kurobo's NPH during the analyzed sample is 8.04 and overall is 8.92, compared to the average NPH of 8.63 for top runners. Due to the fact that Kurobo runs single instance, his stats are bound to be worse than those of multi-instance runners. 13 of the 15 top runners for which we collect data are multi-instance runners, and the average enter of those runners is 2 minutes 22 seconds, compared to Kurobo's overall average enter of 2 minutes 47 seconds and 2 minutes 43 seconds during the analyzed sample of resets. This means that Kurobo is resetting much softer than the other top runners and is willing to play out much more seeds. That is something important to know when interpreting the st statistics that are going to be provided in this video. Kurobo's percentages will be somewhat misrepresentative of the possibilities for other top runners, as Kurobo is resetting for somewhat slower entry times. Another discrepancy between Kurobo's resets and those of top runners is his entry breakdown. Kurobo is only entering via ocean on 80% of entries, whereas top runners are entering via ocean on about 85% of entries. This shows a difference in reset ideologies between Kurobo and other runners, and could still partially be influenced by the fact that he runs single instance. Lastly, I'd like to point out that Kurobo's entry rate is maintained at about 7-8%, 
which is much higher than that of top runners. This could support several claims, such as the claim that he's just a really skilled resetter, or the idea that the difference between multi-instance and single instance causes major difference in reset styles. Regardless, it's something relevant to the study and worth mentioning. I recorded data on several characteristics of the spawn image, starting with lava pool visibility. However, I did not include this in the table because there were no lava pools visible. Then there's horizon visibility, which was a bit subjective. The way I defined a visible horizon was as follows. More than 50% vertically of the lower section of the sky that changes color is visible at any point in the screenshot. Next there's ocean visibility and ocean type, which I determined based on which ocean type is most abundant in the spawn image. Beach visibility was whether or not I could identify any sand visible as a clear and obvious beach. Beach type was either coast or island. I didn't really have any strict definition behind this. It was just based on whether I thought the seed looked like a coast or an island. I defined trees visibility as any source of wood that was easily accessible within 15 seconds of travel time. Village visibility was whether or not I saw any part of a village, and village type was the type of village that was visible, such as plains, desert, savanna, taiga, or tundra. I also recorded whether or not there was a blacksmith visible, but there was none, so I decided to leave it out of the table. Lastly, I recorded if there were any miscellaneous structures visible, such as shipwrecks, ruined portals, pillager outposts, monuments, desert temples, and jungle temples. I also analyzed two groups of complex statistics that were a conjunction of two of the aforementioned recorded simple statistics. I analyzed horizon visibility given that there was no ocean visible, and tree proximity given that there was an ocean visible. I analyzed the data on the characteristics of the spawn images and calculated several statistics listed on the leftmost column of the chart. The first statistic is the proportion, which was the proportion of times that the spawn image qualified for a specific characteristic. The rest of the characteristics are measurements given a specific spawn image characteristic. The statistics highlighted in green represent the RTA distribution. Quick look is the proportion of resets that lasted 8 seconds or shorter. Long check is from 9 to 30 seconds, bad loot is from 31 to 90 seconds, and committed is anything over 90 seconds. The stats are color-coded based on the level of statistical significance. The more saturated tones of green and red represent p-values of less than 0.05, which are the most statistically significant statistics. And the less saturated tones have p-values between 0.05 and 0.1, which are somewhat statistically significant. Any statistics in blue or purple are statistically insignificant, as they have p-values greater than 0.1, and the statistics highlighted in purple are ones that I thought were important. Red represent values that are statistically significantly worse than their com complementary characteristic or characteristics, and green represents values that are statistically significantly better than their complementary characteristic or characteristics. I'm now going to go through the statistics on the chart that are significant and worth pointing out. As you can see, horizon visibility seems to be a positive characteristic as it has a lower average enter and a higher entry rate than seeds without horizon visibility. Ocean visibility seems to be very similar, in fact almost identical to horizon visibility. I noticed there was an extremely high correlation between these two characteristics, as to be expected. As for ocean type, normal oceans seem to be best followed by frozen oceans and lukewarm oceans, with warm oceans being far worse than the other three ocean types. The average enters of normal and lukewarm oceans were slightly lower than the overall average enter of the sample, but what was more jarring was the 258 average enter from frozen oceans, to which I do not have an explanation. However, frozen oceans almost had double the ocean entry rate of lukewarm oceans. Beach visibility remained similar to the statistics of horizon and ocean visibility, as again, there was a very strong correlation among these characteristics. Between coasts and islands, islands had both a better entry rate and a better average enter. However, the averages of time spent in the overworld were not statistically significantly different. This could support the fact that islands are better than coasts, but Kuroba was unable to adapt to that ideology. Tree visibility was a shocker to me when I saw these statistics. The entry rate was three times higher when trees weren't visible than when they were. 
I then realized that this is because of the inverse correlation between tree visibility and ocean presence, which led me to create the complex statistics which I, would, I will discuss momentarily. Village visibility had nothing surprising, however the village type was quite interesting. Grobo entered most often on desert villages. Despite small samples, this happened to come out as statistically significant. There's nothing too important and unusual in the other structures section. The reason I made the horizon given no ocean section was because I wanted to see how well we could predict ocean presence from horizon visibility given no ocean visibility. As it turned out, the advantage presented by having ocean vis excuse me, horizon visible was somewhat significant, but not significant enough to be considered statistically significant in the areas of average enter and entry rate. However, Kurobo did play seeds with the horizon visible for a statistically significantly longer amount of time, meaning that there could still be some significant influence that the horizon has over ocean presence, given no ocean visibility. Given that there was an ocean visible, tree visibility seemed to benefit a runner just a little bit, but not enough to pass the threshold of statistical significance. This means that we can draw up to three conclusions. Either Kurobo doesn't mind playing seeds without trees, Tree visibility on the spawn image doesn't have a large influence on the reality of tree presence, and or tree presence doesn't influence one's ability to enter and the speed at which they do so very heavily. I'm hoping to scale up this project and do much more research on improving background resetting as well as wall resetting. However, that would require me to automate the process of data recording. Please message me on Discord if you are interested in working with me on automating this process. As suggested by Sharpie Man, one of the more efficient and feasible ways of doing this is through a neural network, but I know nothing about this and would need to acquire help. There are a few people without whom this video would not be the same or even possible. I'd like to thank Peach for helping me code a macro to resize the images and make them more presentable, as well as rerunning the code on his computer for me. I'd also like to thank Weak Forced, Sharpie Man, Unassumed, and The Talking Mime for helping me provide statistics as well as giving me suggestions for this video, and also Raval for lending me his footage. Lastly, huge thanks to Kurobo for allowing me to make this video, and for being such a good single instance resetter. In case you wanted to try this project on your own, I left all the macros I used in the description. I also left the link to the spreadsheet, as well as a download link to the image files in the description. This concludes the video, thanks for watching, bye.